Well, well, thank you. And so connecting, uh, if I can have the slides, connecting 500 years of history to the next 500 uh, is really a tough job. And in 10 minutes, I'll do my best in honor of Magellan and the Renaissance explorers we've been talking about. The first thing I want to point out is that wherever we go, wherever we explore, we encounter new oceans. And you've made, some of you may know, you know, Star Trek, space is the final frontier, and I think that's not the right word. Space is our cosmic ocean. It's a forever frontier because it's with us wherever we go. It was with Magellan, with his navigation. And today we sail cosmic oceans with new kinds of messengers. They're not people. They're messengers written in the physics of how our place in space works. And in doing that, we find our new homes. We see the homes we could have as people. And so I want to talk about this Magellan legacy over the last 500 years in the spirit of the space exploration we're doing. Some great explorers are here, Alan Stern, um, Lindy Elkins Tanner, and others who you'll hear from later to inspire how we're exploring. But let me give you a broad brush picture. It all starts with our profoundly ocean world home, planet Earth. Truly a spaceship. Like Magellan's caravels and other vehicles, it is our spaceship. And plenty more to explore and learn. But as we look at Earth now holistically, we see the value of understanding ocean worlds beyond our home. And that really connects us to the ocean exploration of 500 years ago by the great explorers like Magellan. He sailed tangibly and physically on the seas of our planet as his, as his technology of transportation. Today, the exploration craft are different. They fly to places to ride the waves of the echoes of the universe. You saw the Planck measurements, those that won the Nobel for John Mather, that talk about the Big Bang. Um, we are embarking now on voyages of space, internationally, connectedly, that will forever change how we see the cosmos. And I'll talk about the James Webb Space Telescope in the legacy of Magellan in a minute. But let's just think for a minute how far we've come. 500 years, and yet 50 years ago, probably 50 years ahead of its time, humanity went to the moon. We sailed 400,000 kilometers of cosmic oceans to land six times on the moon with people like us, brave explorers. And those people changed the way we saw our ocean world forever in the timing of things, in the collisional records, in the way things work. That's what exploration did. Magellan and his team, Elcano, did the same 500 years ago. So we went to the moon, and the moon inspired us to see new questions. And we always were asking these questions. Are we alone? Where are the heck are we going? Um, why are we going? Where did we come from? These are big questions. And we still ask them, but now our tools are written in different ways. So 20 years ago, NASA launched a mission named for Magellan to map probably the most mysterious object in our solar system, now thanks to Alan's mission to Pluto, the planet Venus. And Magellan mapped Venus using the eyes of electromagnetic radiation and showed us what I believe, and some of us believe, was a former ocean world. How does a planet lose that record? This is some of the magic of our solar system that we can uncover. So the ancient Venus, perhaps oceanic, to the modern Venus, hostile, foreboding, robotically inaccessible almost. These are the kind of legacies that exploration have given us. What will we discover next? So as we look out, you heard from Larry and others, we look out to the fourth planet, planet Mars. And what you first see is a dust bowl of a world, perhaps frozen in time, um, doesn't look most hospitable. You wouldn't, wouldn't think that sailing the cosmic ocean would make Mars special. And yet, lurking in its beautiful rockscapes, Ansel Adams, the photographer, would have been proud of what we can now do on Mars. There are records written in stone. Those rockscapes are the spice trade of science today in space. They show us records of water, buried records of perhaps cryo-oceans on another world where we will go. Inspired by Magellan, Elcano, Prince Henry, and all the other explorers, we will, women and men, go to Mars. That's in our destiny, and we will get there. And one of the steps we will take soon is to return Mars to Earth. And that's important because what Mars is telling us is lurking in the records of meteorites that we can now see. I'm showing you here the nanoverse. 
we can now look at the Mother Nature's records from Mars at a billionth of a meter scale to see what they show us about what we'll get when we go. These X-ray computer tomography images, Magellan would have been proud to have them on his voyage. Um, I doubt he would have been processing 20 gigabytes of data, but in any event, we can see inside the mineral records of water frozen in minerals on Mars as we explore Mars for those elusive records of life. These are the spice trades of today. And continuing, we look at these oceans in space through the eyes of basically the immersive virtual reality of exploring, the tapestry of the, of the atmosphere of Jupiter, the hidden oceans of Europa. We won't sail them like Magellan. We will visit them on the shoulders of robots inspired by the questions Magellan asked and ask there and in other places, are we alone? Now, I love to show this picture because it shows how far we've come. Billions of kilometers from Earth, looking back from the international mission known as Cassini, backlit by Saturn, we see our neck of the woods, our neighborhood. It's like looking back at Spain and Portugal from Magellan's voyage. Here you see the Earth and, and, and Moon and Mars and Venus from a billion kilometers. This is how far we've come. We moved ourselves there without going. And that's what 500 years of exploration has done. Soon, new ways of connecting to these worlds will be possible. Missions such as Dragonfly that you'll hear about later, recently selected competitively. Like Magellan, we compete for our exploration to do the great things that women and men do. This mission will take mobility to the air on a world that's a large moon of Saturn. And then, of course, new worlds, new discoveries, new oceans. Lord, what, what we would have thought about places like Pluto, Ultima Thule, even Enceladus, as being worlds that could contain fluid records of oceans in different ways. It's an oceanic universe, and the sailors of the Renaissance got us there. Now, today we look beyond. But before looking beyond, we remind ourselves that we live with a star every second. Our sun is the source of our space weather. And as we go into space ourselves, we will be worrying about space weather, not the kind of weather that Magellan uh, set forth. So what's ahead? In the next 50 years, we will sail the cosmic oceans, riding on the photons that give us the records of space, seeing not only the stars and galaxies, but the hidden dark matter and dark energy that we know connects these things to us. How will that be? For all of you, you will be members of a new generation, not the internet generation, the web generation. Because in the next couple of years, the people of planet Earth will launch a telescope with an aperture the size of the sails of Magellan ships. And that aperture will change how we see our universe, not by a factor of two or three or four, but by factors of 20 or more. We will use this vehicle, you can see women and men for scale there at the bottom, um, the James Webb Telescope, to ride the records of the universe and the photons that we capture, the spice trade in photons to see what we can see, to actually be able to measure exoplanetary worlds and their atmospheres from Earth orbit or Earth's on L2. These are the voyages of the future that you're all part of. We're all part of it. It are the people's missions. So as we look into space, we look out and then we look back to where we've been because we're going back to the moon. This woman here dressed in a new spacesuit on the moon, we hope will be there in the next five or six years, returning us to a place where we knew there were records left to discover, the records of ancient Earth entombed on the moon. The moon is a destination. The cosmos is a learning place. So as we look forward, I'd like to see this artist rendering filled in by all of you in the legacy of Magellan. This is not a picture. This is a drawing from the mind's eye of women and men. And that woman there with her assets in space, robots, drones, exploring Mars is in our destiny in the way that Magellan and his, his crew gave us that first orbit of planet Earth. So I say, let's go back to the oceans, but the oceans of space, the cosmic oceans. Carl Sagan said it very dramatically and eloquently some 20 years ago. We sail those oceans to never wait to wonder about what we're going to find. This brings with us not only economic gain, not only technology, but inspiration, innovation just to go, and the interconnectivity to all be there together as we discover what we don't know. And that's what it's all about. 
What we don't know, we discover by exploring. And that's the legacy of Magellan and his crew, and that's why we go. So the forever frontier waits. Let's go. Thank you so much. Well, it said questions, but we don't have time for oh. questions. Oh. Yeah, well, so, sure. but I'm sure you will be glad to answer any questions in private during the coffee break or the lunch. Thank you so much. This was really inspiring, and I'm sure the lessons that we heard here, the lessons from our past, will, will bring us a much, much better future for the Earth, the universe, and especially to all of us. Thank you so much.